if you have high cholesterol, okay, there are medications available to help. The key piece that you and your doctor are gonna focus on first is bringing that LDL, your bad cholesterol level, down into the range you want, okay? So if you're also struggling with your triglycerides or your HDL, that will be a secondary piece that they'll work on after they get that LDL regulated. Right. Now work with your doctor, um, because if it's the first time that you go in and those cholesterol numbers are higher, many of them will work with you if you're saying, this was a wake up call, I will change my lifestyle, I'll start exercising and eating better. Okay. But if you know that you can't or you won't do that, or if it hasn't been enough of a change in order to make the, the needle move on those cholesterol numbers, okay, then that medication is gonna be another piece of your treatment plan, okay? There are different classifications of medication that help with cholesterol. We are all unique, we are all different, so it's not one size fits all. Within each of these classifications, there are a number of different types of drugs as well. So if your doctor puts you on one medication and it's not working for you, either because it's not improving those cholesterol numbers or it's causing other problems with your quality of life, side effects or something else that's bothering you, don't just stop taking it. I want you to go back to your doctor and let them know and they can try you on different types of medications instead. Okay, so they'll find something that works well for you. There are some new recommendations out. Um, in 2013, in the fall of that, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association came out with some new recommendations on cholesterol medications. And what they did on this is they looked at a lot of those studies to find out who these medications tended to work best on. All right, so those statin recommendations then, which is one of those classifications of drugs, okay, if somebody has cardiovascular disease already, if their LDL is 190 or higher. If you remember back when we had the chart there, that 190 or higher was that very high level, okay? So we know that those statins can be effective then in working with that group of patients. Also, for those patients that have type 2 diabetes, okay, between the ages of 40 and 75, even if they don't have significantly high LDL levels, Diabetes is another condition that can damage those blood vessels. So it puts you at higher risk. So this can help bring that risk down. There's also, is everybody familiar with Framingham in Massachusetts? Little town up in Massachusetts, they have done four generations of research now on heart health. The vast majority of the foundation that we know on heart health has come out of Framingham. And from that, what they've been able to develop is a cardiovascular risk calculator. So you can go out, it's on the American Heart Association website. Just type in CV risk calculator when you're out on that website. And it will ask you a number of different questions. It'll ask you your age and your gender. It'll ask you how much you exercise, if you smoke, what your cholesterol numbers are. And it will tell you what your 10 year risk of having a heart attack is. This is good to know, okay? It can be a wake-up call. If it's 7.5% or higher, then it's recommended that you go on a cholesterol-lowering medication as well right, to reduce that risk further. <laughs>